Okay, and welcome to another Cool Dude Clam video. Now, I know it's been a long, long time since I've done any videos, but the thing is, it takes time to prepare and stuff. Anyway, doing something a little bit different today, I'm going to see if I can cut my own records. Now, some of you might know that this is something I've wanted to do for a long time. Welcome to Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop with me, your host, Cool Dude Clem. But since I don't have any kind of record cutter, I've decided to make my own. So, what I've got here is a BSR idler driven turntable. It has to be idler driven because we need lots and lots of torque to drive the cutting arm across. And this is the cutting arm itself. I mean itself. It's just a little speaker with a needle attached to the diaphragm. And if we come over here, you can see when the diaphragm moves, hopefully, you can see that the needle also moves. So when we connect this to a sound source and it drags across the record, it should cut a groove in it and it should etch the sound into the groove. I've also got this little device here from putting the output from the playback cartridge, which is a little crappy ceramic cartridge there. So I've got this to match the impedance so it doesn't sound all tinny when we put it into the computer. And because I'm a hipster, I'm using valves. And this is the recording circuit, a crappy little amplifier that I made. And that is going to be driving this speaker through a 3.3 nanofarad, I mean a 3.3 microfarad capacitor. And over here, I've got a little microwave motor, which is going to wind this cord onto it, moving the arm across, so we get a nice even groove spacing. Well, that's all the stuff. Whether it's actually going to work or not, I don't know. So, I'm just going to get this all ready, and we'll see. Okay, well, we're just about ready to start recording now. I'm going to use a CD, like most people do. Now, I did do a test cut to make sure that the cartridge, you know, the playback cartridge can track the, goo, the groove, and it can, so we're pretty good there, but I was just moving it by hand, so this time we're going to have the, the motor moving the thing. I'm sorry about the shaky camera work here, but I've lost the little nut that goes into my tripod. You'll have to excuse my extremely shaky handiwork here. And the only trouble with these motors is you don't know which direction they're going to turn when you turn them on. There's like a 50-50% which, which way it's going to turn, so... So I may have to cycle the power a few times, just taking up the slack here. Okay, it's turning in the right direction the first time, so... Uh, just going to wait for that to take up the slack. And I've just remembered I haven't got this plugged in, so I'm just going to go and plug that in. So I've got this plugged in, so that can turn now. Let's turn this motor on again. I don't know which way it's going to turn. Okay, it's turning the wrong way, so I'll have to cycle the power. Come on. And when that's taken up the slack, I'm going to start the turntable going. Oh, and it's gone off the side. Oh, now start the audio source. Okay. Well, I don't know why, but my plug tracker is repeating the same part over and over and over again. But we have a groove, it's going a little bit faster than I thought it would, but let's see if we actually recorded anything. Okay, and we're back, and we appear to have recorded something. Now it's very faint, but I'm going to play this directly into the computer so you can hear it. It did actually record something, let me just put the needle down onto the thing, trying to get it into the groove. So, it didn't work very well, but it did work. So what I'm going to do now is find a way of improving this. 
All right, it's time to get medieval on this thing. What, thought I was going to say a word beginning with A and ending in S? I'm trying to keep this a family show. Or family friendly, anyway. So, I've got this bulb suspended above the quote-unquote record that I'm going to cut. Using a smaller spindle size on the motor here to make this move more slowly. And I've connected this to a proper amplifier. So, with the record nice and soft from the heat from the bulb, this thing hopefully moving the tonar more slowly, and a more powerful amplifier, hopefully we should be able to make a much better sounding record. Whether it'll work or not, I have no idea. I should have mentioned I've also borrowed the turntable platter from one of my other record players, just to kind of try and spread out the heat a little bit better. Okay, so I'm just about to make a recording. I have to shield the camera from the light there. That's heating up the disc that's going to be cut, so it's hopefully a little bit softer. Of course, with this way I've got this set up here, it's going to take a little bit longer to wind the thing on. And I've had to turn the amplifier around so the wires could reach. So, I've got a file on the computer, all ready to play. Okay, let's do a recording. That's coming up quite strongly through the speaker. Okay, so this is a recording that I'm making for recording myself. So what I'm going to do is... I'm going to get this all recording, I'm going to do that off camera because I'm going to need both hands to do this. I should really be looking in the camera's viewfinder when I'm filming, so I can see what the camera's seeing. So, yeah, let's see if this works. Count one or more. I'm going to call this experiment a fail. For one thing, the turntable did not have as much torque as I thought it would, so... I had a hard time cutting the record. And also, even though... I worked really hard on this thing to try to get it to cut nice consistent groove spacing. It turns out that I have to push on this thing back a little bit or it will just shoot across the record and not cut the groove the way I want it to. I don't know why the earlier experiment worked a little better in that regard, but still. Still not making a very clear recording, but I'm going to say it's progress. Even though I have the treble all the way up, and the bass all the way down. So, providing a sort of equalization for the recording. Okay, so let's try and play this. And see if it did actually record any intelligible speech. Okay, I think that's about all we're going to get. I will probably revisit this in the near future, when I find a better way to cut the records. And of course, try to find out a way, try to make a better cutter than this thing, because this thing just does not work as good as I thought it would. So anyway, at least we recorded something, so that's pretty good. Anyway, until next time, goodbye. I've also got this little device here for putting the output from the stylus for putting the output from putting the from putting the output in a little crappy ceramic cartridge there. So I've got this to imp